We are actually uh, at, uh, very interested in the interface between chemistry and biology and also application of such a, a, a interest development in terms of fundamental research. So on one hand, we really want to take advantage of what uh, uh, the chemical tools that were available, we can actually look into biological target. At the same time, we want to take advantage of recent technology and development concept from biology inspired from the biology and do better chemistry. What we really have been interested in doing is to using DNA as a starting material where we have been able to utilize that to make all kinds of structures and then we can decorate that structure with the different kind of nanomaterials. The most important uh, advantage of the, using DNA as a, as a sensor is that they can actually cover a wide, wide range of targets. For example, small molecule like metalloids, some toxic target, and obviously also DNA biocompatible, biodegradable, so you can actually, it's not polluting the environment. It's very environmentally friendly. So, so far, our application focused mainly on environmental monitoring, particularly toxic metalloid detections, also detecting some organic contaminants in the environment. What we can detect is a, a variety of targets like lead, uranium, or as well as the small molecules such as cocaine or adenosine. It's quite a, a powerful technology. Here is the solution of a gold nanoparticle. This is made of nanoscale-sized gold nanoparticles. It shows a red color. We combine this nanoparticle with uh, the functional DNA. I want to make sensors out of it. We are going to show addition of some targets. It will give a instant color change. So by seeing this color change, we'll know how much targets is in it, and we can make a better sensor out of it. Here is the comparison. So before and after addition of the targets, we will see this huge color transition. Biosensor detection by seeing color changes. So what we have done in here, although it's colorless right now, we placed the DNA with gold particle right here. So you dip this one into a solution, if there's no such target, this DNA uh, gold nanoparticles will not have any reaction. There's no change of color and stay in this particular place. But if there is a target in here, there will be a specific uh, changes of conformational chemical reaction occurs that the uh, DNA gold nanoparticle will be disrupted. It will be migrate through it, and then there will be a change of color so that one, something like this occurs, and there will be color changes in, in there. And based on whether the color changes, where it migrates to it, in the few minutes, one can actually have semi-quantitative or quality information whether the uh, food is safe to eat, the water is safe to drink, or you know, whether one has a disease in the urine or blood or not. Most people are familiar with the double helix. When two DNA put together, they form double helix and then they so-called hybridizations. So in the absence of the target, those two pieces of DNA will be hybridized together and then there will be minimal or no forensic signal. In the presence of the target, a lead of uranium, and the metal comes in and then cleave like a scissors, cut the DNA into uh, two pieces, and one piece will fly off, and then give you the increase of fluorescent signals. What I will show is using uh, the fluorescence to uh, detect the target by DNA. Uh, so, uh, here I have a few samples. So we can first start with uh, uh, a sample without lead, and you will see the fluorescent signal is very weak. Uh, we uh, put it in the fluorometer. The sample is in, and we just need to operate the software to detect it. This is intensity for our blank sample. The number is here. It's like uh, 400,000. You can remember its value, OK? We do another sample with uh, some lead. Then put this back in the floor meter. It's pretty simple, right? Now for the sample with some lead, we get the similar curve, but shape is similar, but the intensity is much, much higher. It's now about 4 million. So it's just this sample has a fluorescence intensity like 10 times of our blank sample. So with some lead, you will see 10 times increasement of uh, fluorescence. This is the latest product that uh, uh, developed based on our technology in Beckman and uh, University of Illinois that uh, we work with together with a local startup company called Endalyze. So this is a portable fluorometer 
This is the cartridge that contained inside the sensor that we developed. And then all you do is put it in here, and then put in a sample solution of interest, and push through here, okay? And then take it off, and close it, and push start. And then in about two minutes, one can get a reading of the sample uh, con concentration. In this case, it's lead. The principle behind this uh, particular meter is based on fluorescence, where the DNA will be in the present of the target that cleave the DNA, release the fluorophore, and then have increase of fluorescence signals. The same technology can be applied. It's just a simple change of the, the software behind it. We can also develop uh, the same product for detection for organic contaminants, diseases, bacteria, virus, and, and so on and so forth. We can already demonstrated we can detect simple uh, metal ions like toxic metal ions like mercury and uranium and copper. And uh, also we can actually detect many other like uh, uh, recreational drugs and pharmaceutical drugs and also diseases, many other kind of cancer, other type of diseases. So the potential is huge because it's not only simple, very accurate, but also have, can, uh, can be applied for many different uh, variety of targets that interest in a lot of people. Every day there's a new discovery happening and then new ideas and then uh, you know being able to see your idea being able to realize it you know in your own lab and with a really uh, fantastic group of students and postdocs and so that's really I think both education as well as the research product that's really exciting. I think with the interface of more than one field, mostly chemistry and biology, but also material science engineering. So what we really want to do is to get inspiration from each area, and we want to have a combined benefit of all the fields that we can we be able to uh, take advantage of. So the end result is not only the new advances in each of them field in terms of fundamental knowledge, but more importantly, has the new applications and new products coming out of this. It can actually people can immediately use to to be able to uh, change their lives.